I now have the honor to introduce um, Mr. Roland Liebscher Bracht and his wife, Dr. Petra Bracht. Their mission is to free people from pain. They have developed over the last 35 years a pain therapy, and the approach is to help people to help themselves. And to give you a couple of numbers to understand the scope and the impact of their work, um, they have been just awarded, I think, a month or two ago by YouTube as Europe's largest um, YouTube channel on health. They have 1.9 million uh, people following them, and about 1.5 million people do and view their exercises daily uh, on YouTube. Um, they have written 19 books, most of them bestsellers in eight different languages. And um, in fact, I'm doing their exercises every morning. It feels quite good, uh, I must say, Roland. And they will talk to us about the connection between the freedom from pain and mental health. Um, in fact, Roland will start, and then with a slight different focus, we will have Petra speaking to us. And I will introduce you, Petra, separately when, when, you come to, when it comes to you. Roland, over to you. Press this button. Yeah. 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 Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And um, yeah, it's a big pleasure for me to be here. Thanks for the invitation, Shri Shri and um, Mr. Szanecki, thanks for the invitation. Now we can start. Um, when it comes to mental health, we need to consider the issue of pain, especially chronic pain. 100 million Europe suffer from it. That's about one of seven people. Next slide, please. Chronic pain is a chronic problem. Chronic pain is among the most frequent reasons to go to the doctor. People suffering chronic pain Lost a, lost a lot of time suffering and missing work. And maybe they have to live with permanent limitations. And the statistics for mental health are just as alarming. According to the World Health Organization, more than 150 million people in Europe suffered mental health in 2021. And in 2018 alone, the EU spent an estimated 600 billion euros on mental health big problem. Chronic pain and mental health Ill, uh, and mental illness often happen at the same time. It's estimated that up to 60% of people experiencing chronic pain are also suffering from depression. Now, how are physical pain and mental health related? Next slide, please. If you ever experienced pain, especially chronic pain, you know what an impact constant suffering has on your quality of life. It drains your energy, reduces cognitive abilities, diminishes the joy of life. It can keep us from spending time with our family, meeting friends, playing sports and getting good sleep. The result, the stress and anguish can lead to mental illness. The risk factors for chronic pain are often the same as those for mental illness. Poverty, unemployment, limited access to health care. Next slide, please. The relationship between mental illness and physical pain can be a vicious circle. Physical stress is mental stress, and vice versa, the illness of one can affect the other. This leads me to the fascia. What is it? Leading experts describe fascia as the largest sensory organ in the body. It's a network of elastic connective tissue throughout our body and surrounds our organs, muscles, bones, nerves, and every cell, at least. The fascia is filled with receptors that activate the part of the brain responsible for emotions. Manual therapy and exercises for fascia have the potential to stimulate the same part of the brain. Next slide, please. And this is particularly valuable because both can improve physical and emotional pain. Unfortunately, one third of Europeans suffering from chronic pain are not receiving any treatment. They tend to isolate, may feel helpless, and hopeless. These traits are considered suicide risk factors. A solution to this problem would be improving access to health care. 
If we want to improve people's mental health, we urgently need to improve our understanding of chronic pain and how to treat it. Studies show exercise can help alleviate musculoskeletal pain. It's also effective in treating and preventing mental illness. Exercise has been shown to fight symptoms of depression as effectively as drugs. Exercise has also been shown to stop the development of depression. Now to our approach to pain therapy. We from Lipschon Pracht help people by getting them moving. If you take a look at our YouTube channel or our app, you will see the range of exercises we have developed for the most pain conditions. These exercises provide an optimal combination of stretching and strengthening for pain reduction. In this way, in this way those affected can help themselves with most pain conditions. These conditions are often the result of our modern life. Most of us sit too much, like now, communicate, um, sorry, and don't move enough without compensating for it. The WHO considers inactivity to be a major risk factor for chronic pain, non-communicable diseases, and death worldwide. If we don't move enough, our body changes, our muscles weaken and shorten, and our fascia become inflexible, becomes inflexible. Simple movements that we take for granted become painful. We know from studies that people suffering from chronic pain often feel like they are not taken seriously and don't see how they can relieve their pain. What they need and what we can give to them is know-how, encouragement, and a positive outlook. People easily understand the way we explain pain conditions and how they can help themselves with our exercises. And doing them, people often feel immediately empowered against pain. What's more, our stretches are accessible on YouTube and free of charge, easy to follow, and can be done anytime, anywhere, by anyone of any age. There are, no, there are no side effects and you are not dependent on a doctor. Our exercise can help offset the physical consequences of our modern life. In most cases, as little as 7 to 15 minutes, only this, yeah, um, are enough. Freedom from pain is absolutely necessary if you want to improve people's mental health. Going forward, Exercise should take a much more prominent place in the strategy to improve mental health in Europe or, well, or worldwide. In, school, uh, in schools, universities, workplaces, at last everywhere it's necessary. Humanity needs help to help itself. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Roland. Um, now, let me ask to the audience, how many of us have uh, at least once in our lifetime done a diet? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> okay, you go. I think, Petra, your, your contribution is quite relevant. Uh, so, Petra is a doctor for 40 years and specialized in nu nutritional medicine and intermittent fasting. She has been one of the people in the world inventing that fasting. She's Germany's first vegan doctor and has been doing public relations since the beginning of her career and would like to explain how people can keep themselves healthy with self-help nutrition. Petra, let's hear from you. Thanks a lot, Christopher, for the introduction. Many thanks for the invitation to Shri Shri Kurudava. For, thank you for Mr. Chanecki for inviting us. And hello, everybody here, ladies and gentlemen. In the first part of our talk, Roland has made clear the positive impact exercise can have on mental and physical health. But what about your eating habits? Please, the next slide. Yeah, do you remember this slide? The body and mind together, they work together. What you eat is also important to your mental and physical well-being. Recent studies have shown that an unhealthy diet 
and a lack of exercise can put you at risk of developing depression. If you're already suffering from mental disorder, a pure diet and no exercise can make it even worse. Let's talk first about the indirect influence a healthy diet has on mental health. What should we eat? What shouldn't we eat? I'd like to share a quote from American writer Michael Pollan, who summarized the essential of a healthy diet in only seven words. Eat food, mostly plants, not too much. <laughs> So I can stop here, but I go on for sure. <laughs> Keeping to a plant-based diet supports your Im immune system. A strong immune system helps ward off pain and of illness. Here are some evidence, only some evidence-based facts we know about plant-based diet. Vegan or vegetarian diets can relieve chronic musculoskeletal pain. And they can help against inflammation. Certain food groups, I'm so sorry, but it is like it is, especially meat, can increase chronic inflammation. In the long run, these inflammations can have dangerous consequences for your physical and for your mental health. Meat and the product made out of meat and dairy and their products, sweets, Foods made from white flour can fuel inflammation and can weaken our immune system. So our diet can have an influence on lifestyle diseases like, and now I, I ask you to make your eyes, your eyes and ears open. <laughs> First, it's obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart diseases, autoimmune diseases, dementia, Parkinson, and certain types of cancer. <coughs> and these are diseases that we are largely responsible for, but the, often we do not know about this possibility. And now let's talk about the direct influence a healthy diet has on a mental health. Adults who maintain a healthy diet has less likely to develop symptoms of mental health issues like depression. In, in 2009, a groundbreaking study reported that people who ate a Mediterranean diet decreased their risk of developing this depression. A Mediterranean diet consists of vegetables, fresh fruits, nuts, only small amounts of fish and meat, healthy spices, and cold-pressed olive oil. Following up 10 years later, the positive effects were still visible. What about wine? Um, <laughs> small amounts of wine, okay? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> A study, another study from um, 2022 showed the positive effects a healthy diet had on the cognitive abilities of older adults. Healthy eating isn't only for adults. Good nutrition can even help children and young people with mental health problems. So maybe some of you might be thinking now, food food goes into our bellies, not our heads. Where is the connection? Please, the next slide. Thanks. Here it is. Approximately 100 trillion bacteria live in our digestive tract. Food, stress, and these bacteria are connected. Anxiety, depression, and pain weaken the health of our gut, and thus also of our immune systems. You can keep your good bacteria healthy by eating, what do you think? Hmm. 
by eating a plant-based diet and also managing stress. Eating at fixed times and intermediate fasting can also help and help very well. As you can see, what you eat is important for your mental health. But how much you eat is also important. People who are obese are twice as likely to suffer from depression compared to people who aren't obese. What we eat and how much we eat affects how we think and how we feel. And I think it's a very important point. Because if people are, feel good and are happy, they have other thoughts for the life in totally. There are many studies available that make clear the benefits of proper nutrition in the workplace. Healthy food and short exercise sessions can go a long way towards improving physical and mental health as well as productivity. So finally, which diet is the best? I think you know which one I would vote for. The clear winner is a plant-based diet because it keeps people physically fit and mentally health. Roland and I shown you the major impact diet and exercise can have on mental health and how we try to help people help themselves against pain. Just the freedom from pain is a prerequisite for mental health. So is health, especially the absence of often diet-related serious civilization diseases. Can there be better reasons to make a healthy diet as well as exercise a permanent part of our lives and thus automatically create the best conditions for our mental health? Thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>